Hey everyone, Home Aquaponics here. Um, my disclaimer is, is that this is what it says, which is it's home aquaponics. So, you know, the only reason I even have enough pride to put this on here and talk about it is because it's for a small situation and there's a big division there. Um, you know, a lot of large operations, uh, so places the size of almost uh, nearly Walmart, you know, or even larger pushing lettuce around on rafts and things and and uh, but you know all that's great and they all you know usually it's the same kind of lettuce they have it just coming down in a giant flow you know basically but this is for someone who wants to grow food for themselves uh, maybe them and uh, or he and a family or someone uh, else that he knows would want to go in on it together and then try to get the experience as well as reap the benefits. Now, the only reason why you're not seeing more production than what you do see is because of my lighting. And I'm using just simple lights. I've already talked about that in other videos. They're just fluorescents and there's not that much of them. And uh, so, you know, the right amount of T5s or a really good 600 in the middle or something that would be you know maybe even uh, maybe more even maybe a thousand watts on this whole one little panel or something just one light you know right up in the top but you're immediately gonna pay 30 to 40 almost sometimes fifty dollars a month in electric bill right there and and that doesn't include your pumps and your other things so um, you know it's all about that I mean you want a seven hundred dollar electric bill you can uh, run a you can run a pretty decent amount of aquaponics, you know, but but here we only really want to spend a hundred bucks or hundred and fifty bucks. That little fifty dollars actually is a lot because you went from having an electric bill that's seventy five dollars to all of a sudden it's a hundred and twenty five. So that's exactly, I mean I don't know if it's exact math actually that's the last, but basically you know obviously percentage wise. And uh, so what do you want to get at um, the couple different things in this video. Uh, one thing is plant space. Um, I cut the holes in the bottoms of the cups more. Uh, cut more room for the roots with these beer cups because they're just, uh, you know, they really need more space in the end. In, in the beginning, the roots will grow through those little holes you cut at the bottom like I did, but it's not until I start, you know, slicing and making some room for those roots that I saw immediate growth and health response and this is what's coming back from that I've actually uh, trimmed it quite a bit too we eat from it every night too so you got to see that this is like a, a coffee farm or something you know it's it's a productive garden where you're taking from it all the time or like a it's similar to actually how women uh, pick tea it's a similar concept because it's a bunch of microgreens and it's continuously growing and you you take the leaf that is actually ready uh, to be taken or the leaf that needs to be pruned, you know, et cetera, et cetera, um, explaining the obvious to the people who really know a lot about this, but, um, you know, the plant needs space, but then the only other contradiction to that is that in a small garden, anybody will tell you that you need a lot of little plants that produce a solid number of outcomes versus you know, in the big outdoors and stuff, you can have four or five of what you, or I'm sorry, one of what you would have four or five of in here because that one is going to get huge and the sun's going to hit it. And if anything grows closer to it, that plant's going to kill it because it won't get any light and it'll take over its entire thing. And so, you know, that is how that is with the, um, you know, sun and all the differences with, you know, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's like, it's UV, there is UV in fluorescence, but I just don't want to get into it right now, um, the difference and why this is just kind of the lowest quality, basically. That's all I'm saying is that I'm running, you know, and let's see if I can do this without shaking around too much. There's the, you know, low quality, Lowe's hardware, and then the one, oh, sorry about that, one T5 that I did own uh, from a, a while back, actually. So, anyway, uh, you know, I could move this thing around, but I'm just mostly talking about the space the plants need and um, at the same time maximizing the plants you can have. So it's really, that's a, you know, these things are like kale and the way we eat on them with lettuce and stuff, you know, you can take just little leaves and you can have three or four plants in each one of these little 
containers because I, you know, I don't want them growing very tall either. So it, you know, it kind of just bushes out the whole thing. And and uh, and and then one thing too is the variety of uh, seeds that they have for um, a lot of the gardens. And I think where we even got these, the varieties are weak. And it's sad, and it's true, and many other gardeners will tell you. Let's see if I can get that level again. Um, you know, they'll tell you that at the hardware store, those seeds that you're getting there are, some of them are heirloom varieties, and some of them are actually just, you know, quality seed that will grow the plant. But in the end, a lot of the genetics that you're getting is, is just rock bottom. And um, I did the research, and most greenhouses and uh, things like that, they actually order their seed privately from you know, like serious distri you know, uh, <laughs> don't even say distributors, you know, uh, you know, they really do, they, they, you know, they don't mess around, they, those companies you see at Lowe's and stuff, that's, they're selling to grandma, and they're, some even think it's a conspiracy that, uh, you know, those companies are kind of causing the real homegrown garden world to never really have any kind of abundant amount of food. Because trust me, when you see the difference in some, even outside or whatever, you know something that says romaine that you buy at a seed packet will be, and and actually let's do it. Let's let's get over here. Um, I'm gonna raise this up for just a second because, you know, that'll bring me to my next topic. Which uh, now that I'm talking about space and cutting holes for this uh, rocks and whatnot, I'm sorry if it's shaking. Um, I'm gonna move you over here real quick. All right, and uh, so this is what. Uh, I had problems with also in the past was is I had the lettuce way too close together and not enough light same deal just bottoming minimizing the amount of light I need to spend and now I realize yeah um, you know outside plants dominate one takes over the other but here the lettuce isn't strong enough to really do that so it just crowds and really hinders its growth and stuff and actually many people with lettuce will say this is very close together and it is but notice how I'm very carefully taking from the bottoms and and uh, kind of still the microgreens approach where you're just chopping off little bits at a time you're not attempting to you know raise a head of lettuce and then market that in a you know cellophane package and all that and and, and you know it's none of that at all. You're you're you've got your you know home garden, home setup, your family. Uh, for instance, even my bunny rabbit. Uh, I've got you know my bunny rabbit. She eats from it. You know so. Um, but yeah, so one of the main things is I had it way too close together, and that was just putting in too many seeds, and and uh, and then also did not have the holes in the cups enough. So this is what it looks like now and and you know like I said they're not very big and that's the variety that these I mean they I think they call this romaine and then you know think about that butter crunch you see at the store that's like a foot tall and you know and a lot of that's even organic too so you know they're just different varieties and uh, you know this is about the closest I think they could come and even had to get rid of a few and and uh, and now, word of warning, if anybody tries this, the only reason these cups can stand up without falling over is because there's a, a black felt, poly felt layer under the pots, and that allows the roots to kind of latch onto it healthy and, and grab on and hold on. So, you know, I really, because see, I know from experience when people see someone doing, uh, you know, a certain thing on the internet, they tend to want to mimic it, not knowing the actual problems that they may have or something the person didn't even cover. So, you know, one side is I feel like I talk way too much sometimes on this, and another side is it's educational, and, and someone that really wants to know this is going to listen. So, and, uh, and I'm doing it for myself, too. I, I enjoy making these videos and mostly trying to capture what I have. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be moving in a month to a very good, positive place. and uh, not going to talk about that at all, but um, really everything's going great. And, uh, you know, so the, the topic is, is how I think, you know, I've had my plants sometimes too close together, but then other times when you have to make the most of whatever wattage you have and you want to have the most for the space you have, sometimes you're going to have to see that you're going to have to have more adequate pruning like these. You're going to have to have them spaced apart. And most important, you know, with, with hydroponics and stuff is just the roots need, sorry about that, 
the roots need space, you know, the roots really need, uh, oh god, this is terrible, uh, so, you know, I, I've just now opened those cups up more, uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and, and, uh, it's coming back, I mean, and, and they're looking real good, and, uh, you know, and I've been trimming them hard, too, just trying to clean them, clean them up, but, you know, maybe making excuses for why it's just not, you know, I showed it in the beginning, there were some pretty big leaves in some of my first videos, and I had actually waited for that as well, so, and then partly that's what it was, is the plants then kind of outgrew those holes in those cups, so I, I took a bite, you know, went backwards a little while, uh, you know, haven't been able to make a video, but, uh, you know, this is it, and it is very lush and green and just absolutely, uh, and I pick stuff every night, you know, I'm going for salad, my bunny rabbit, uh, on a daily basis, this garden is harvested from, okay? Daily basis. So, you know, like I said, they need the right amount of space, but I've seen a lot of operations, and I'm not dogging them. I, I, everyone's got their own thing, too. But I've seen a lot of operations where, you know, they're utilizing an outdoor method or a high-production method, and the space they're giving the plants and the things they're doing for those plants and stuff are not going to represent the work and the effort put in and I don't care what anyone says that's a big part of it because you know in all of agriculture if you know if the outcome does not equal the input you are you know unless you're just a hobbyist that can throw money at things you know you want things to be paying back you know, you don't want things to, you don't want to get into aquaponics so it takes $20,000. You want to get into aquaponics so over the next 5, 10 years, you save $20,000 in greens and lettuce and things like that because you naturally or, you know, I don't know, your family and stuff, you just, you end up using it. So, uh, this is it. And, um, you know, so, yeah, mostly this is about plant space. I have a other aquarium video about that too, so it's hard to want to make two videos, but, um, you know, and also just showing that uh, in the beginning, and I'm not too afraid to admit it, the root zones were too close together in those cups with the size of holes. The holes were not big enough, okay? There were too many plants in each container. Um, you know, that, that kind of thing, uh, you know, you have to realize that that's too much. But then when I look at the average person that has a lot of this going on, I see a lot of wasted space. And I feel bad for them because, you know, imagine you have a big store or a small store, and you can pack all the merchandise into the small store and it will be crowded, or you can pack all of the merchandise into the large store and it'll be spread out. So obviously the large one is preferable, but when it comes to small, you know, you don't necessarily want to adopt a method that is a uh, possibly a space waster and you know let's I'll, I'll say it right now you know I've seen people with the little Walmart tote tubs and like the ones I have for the water here let's see right down here you know people are making like uh, you know um, you know the bubble buckets and stuff like that and it, it might be a good way to go but I'm just just letting you know that that might not be the best for your space because that's a it's a method that's meant to more like kind of you know grow a bigger plant you know and and whatever that plant is you know it just Anyway, I, I, I just want to let you know this is more like a microgreens and uh, at the same time uh, working on getting it spaced, doing trimming, uh, you know, obviously pruning uh, bad leaves, bad stems, uh, and, and, you know, I'm curious to see what summer is too because I wasn't even planning on being around this long and so uh, I might even have to ask one of my buddies for a little of my something back so because I, uh, you know, I, I basically... Uh, have nothing for bugs right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if I'd even spray. To be honest, if at this point, if, if I had a bug infection because of uh, or infestation, you know, from uh, coming of spring and whatnot, then I might just let this go because at that point, it's, you know, it's that's where it is. But, but if I was here longer, I can run this year round. Maybe come August, if you don't have a good air conditioner or something like that, you might want to just kind of turn a few lights off and just let it stagnate for a month or something. But um, if I had a greenhouse, which I don't, you know, if I had a greenhouse, God, sky is the limit. And and here then you would not see this many plants together at all. So if, if someone says about my videos, which I heard a comment yesterday, I read one, 
um, it, you know, it was saying that, well, you know, I'm not sure about this method, but here's kind of a fail-safe method. Someone had put that on there. And, and that's what I'm kind of getting at is that, yes, you have to be a little more of a MacGyver or someone willing to kind of, you know, tinker with stuff, really. And, but if you want to go out and buy that method, well, guess what? You, you know, you just bought a $3 kitty litter bucket with a, you know, $4 pump. And then now you got, you know, a $50, $70 bucket for one plant. And it's like, that isn't necessarily what someone needs that's, you know, let's just, let's just say, an old, you know, someone wants to make use of their time and, uh, you know, the back to the lander types, patriot types and stuff too. And, and I could see, you know, the uncle Vietnam vet guy or something doing it for the family. Or you just don't know, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> and, uh, but basically, yeah, this is a, this is a method for, uh, you know, indoor small spaces. And that's why I call it home aquaponics. To be honest, that should be the name of this video, is why I call this home aquaponics and, and what it means. So, all right, thanks a lot. This has been a great video. Um, and uh, sorry for the unsteadiness moving the tripod around. I, I, I don't have many MGM effects or anything like that. All right, great. Thanks. Home Aquaponics.